Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today we're going to do a Let's Play tutorial of Old World, and you may be saying, Old World, I know I've heard of that, uh, it's been out for a little while, what's going on, why are you covering this game now? Well, Old World has been exclusive to the Epic Game Store, and I know there are a lot of people out there that uh, don't always go over to Epic, or they only get their games from Steam. Well, it is going to. this game is going to be released on Steam in the second quarter of 2022. So I thought we'd go through, learn how to play the game together, so when it is available on Steam, you know what the heck's going on. Now, this is a fan fantastic game and i think it quite it hasn't quite gotten its due because it was just exclusive to epic uh it was named by pc gamer as the strategy game of the year in 2021 and i think it's well deserved this old world is a mixture between civ civilization uh, of course one of the most famous games ever made and crusader kings it's got a little bit of uh both and i think it does both really really well as a matter of fact um you know i'm a long time civ player uh probably played it civ 4 was my last foray i mean i have played around with civ 5 and 6 but um this game is better than civilization in my opinion uh and better than civ 6 uh certainly so civ 4 i mentioned that the the developer that has made this game is soren johnson who is the guy that was the lead developer for civ 4 which i think in many rankings is you know one of the top three or four games ever made so uh he certainly comes with pedigree he's also he also made off world trading company which was another just fantastic game so anyway this is old world if you're not familiar with it and what the heck is a let's play tutorial well sometimes i do tutorials where we just try to learn and sometimes i do let's plays where i just play let's play tutorial we do a little bit of both so i think a game like this is best to play it uh, as you're explaining it and so we're going to go through at nuts and bolts this thing we're going to read through it all and figure out how to play the game so you are all ready to go well luckily enough we have a learn to play but we'll get there in a second uh, you've got single player multiplayer mods now i am playing on the kind of pre-release steam version here so there are not any mods that are shown but there is a very active modding community that i think will come to steam as soon as the game comes out uh, and a lot of you know cool stuff there extras what is it? oh yeah you've got a hall of fame here if you want that map editor there is a great tooltip system and encyclopedia here if you have any questions uh the manual anyway uh, you can check that out. Now, if we go to single player, you'll see one thing I wanted to point out here that's kind of cool is game of the week. And so you can constantly be getting new games, uh, you know, interesting setups, uh, different difficulties and challenges and whatnot. And you can play this game of the week. There are scenarios. I think most people play the full game, though. So anyway, let's go back and let's learn to play. And we're going to go to tutorial number one and start there. Now, these tutorials are pretty good, but I, I think that some people are better visual learners as far as just watching somebody else do it and talk about it. And so that's really the purpose here. All right, tutorial one, the old world. Uh, old world takes place in classical antiquity focused around the Mediterranean Sea in the Middle East, where you lead one of seven nations. Now, this is where I'll start to tell you the tool tips here are awesome. That's not a particularly impressive one. Uh, but if you have any questions in this game, uh, you can find it very easily with great tool tips and also you can lock the tooltips like you can in Crusader Kings 3. So you can go down rabbit holes of tooltips. You lock one, then you lock the next one, and next thing you know, you're 16 uh, uh, screens away from where you started uh, just learning about the game. You begin with a single settler, okay, and there's a tooltip. Infantry, it's got 20 hit points, 3 defense two movement per order and we'll talk about orders because that's one of the great innovations of this game it can found a city it can harvest resources it consumes two apples no that's food uh the green apple its production is 80 for growth and again we'll talk more and more about that it upgrades to a worker uh and must forge an empire in a world filled with already developed nations 
This is the first in the series of tutorials. Uh, they're going to cover everything, so they say. We'll see. Uh, we're also going to do a Let's Play of this game, and so we're going to play a game right from the start. Um, okay, uh, start game. Let's get out here on the map and see what happens. All right, here we go on the main screen, and we'll go around and talk about everything that you see on the screen. In Old World, you will explore the map with scouts, okay? Kind of hang, I'll hover over scouts. I'm not going to read over each one every time, but I will hover over them so you can kind of see the difference of different unit types here. Expand your nation by founding cities on city sites. Okay, and you can see there you've got urban tiles and you've got what they call rural tiles. Uh, it doesn't talk about it there, but we'll talk about it here. Um, exploit harvestable resources, luxuries, and recruit armies to exterminate. Wow, exterminate rival nations and tribes or negotiate and trade with them. It's your choice. Click on the bottom to get it going. Okay, well done. Now let's cover the essential items. The menu button where you can exit the game. So you got the menu button up here, right? You've also got the help screen. You've got, uh, okay, well, we'll wait. We'll wait on those. Uh, but there's the menu button. Always important, right? Um, and it's got a very nice system down here, but we'll get into that as we go along. The mini map is at the bottom right. The cycle button is at the bottom left. When all actions have been cycled through, they'll show you end year, and clicking it will proceed it to the next turn. So in these games, there are 200 turns. Now, I can't speak to the scenarios because I haven't played a scenario yet, but in the full game, there's 200 turns. So 200 years to accomplish, you know, victory, I guess you would say. The buttons above the cycle button allow you to cycle through specific categories, uh, events, civilian units, military units, so on and so forth. Uh, we will continue on here. Orders. Now, this is probably the biggest innovation of this game, and I have been waiting forever for somebody to do this. And what does it basically mean? Well, let's read it first, and then if it's not clear, I'll talk about it. Orders are an important feature of Old World. Units can move multiple times each turn, but each move consumes one order right so you're limited now in a lot of games like a civ game you move a unit you can only move it once let's say okay and it moves then you can move another unit whatnot here you can stack those movements meaning you can use if you have a unit that you in particular want to do a lot with that turn you can do more with that unit but then you will do less with other units right other actions such as attacking or building also consume orders your available orders can be seen in the lower left corner of the leader panel besides this the scroll why why am i having a hard time with scroll the scroll icon the concentric blue rings around the selected unit represent the number of orders. Okay, well, we'll see that on the map. The rate at which you produce orders each turn is determined by your leader's legitimacy. Okay, and so this is very important. What your leader's legitimacy is, is how many orders he is going to generate each turn. But they can also be augmented by certain improvements, okay? You may also buy and sell orders by clicking on the scroll icon. You can buy and sell anything in this game. And if you look up here, we've got money. These are the resources in this game. Money, food, iron, stone, wood, and orders. And orders are just like a resource, okay? And then you have what I'll call kind of the uh, research type things, the things to building, the special resources that don't really comport to something that's tangible. And that is science, civics, training, and luxuries, okay? So these are the tangible sort of resources. These are the more intangible sort of resources, all right? Um, let's issue some orders. Select the scout on the map by left clicking them. Note that this goal, as with all goals, will be shown in the top right of the screen once you click on the, blo the button below. I will select the scout. Yes, I will. Okay. Well, look at this beautiful map. We'll kind of zoom back and you see this fog of war. Now, as we move out here, uh, that fog of war will recede and that's what you really want with the scout. Now, what is this above here? That is the symbol for scout. Uh, and so if you click on that, okay, it'll tell us all about the scout. The scouts have longer range of vision and a higher movement speed than other units, making them perfect for exploring the map. When your scout is on a hill, it can see further. 
but its vision range is reduced by trees. A scout is hidden when they are on a tile with trees, making them great at checking to see what your enemies are up to. The terrain your units move over will also have an impact on how far they can move each turn. Hills, sand, crossing a river, scrub, trees, all add extra movement uh, points. Rivers within your borders only require two-thirds of a movement point. Roads within your borders or unclaimed land require two-thirds of a movement point. Let's explore the valley. Move the scout to the north and cross the river by right-clicking any red highlighted tiles while the scout is selected. Okay, so let's go look at the main screen here. First of all, you've got year one of 200. We are Greece for the tutorial. So we are the Greeks. There's the Greeks and the Romans, the Babylonians. Uh, we'll run into a few of them out here, but there's seven main civilizations. Okay, it is year one of 200, and here is our score. Uh, if any of your opponents reach 27 points, the game ends. All right, well, that's that's a little more advanced than where we are now. We've got the help screen. We've got available wonders, which are books, or I'm sorry, buildings that you can build. We've got our succession. Now, I said this is a lot like CK3, right? Crusader Kings 3. So your succession does matter. You are going to have heirs. You're going to have uh, different characters in the game. And uh, it's really interesting the way it does it in this game. Uh, you also have active laws and available laws that matter. Game log. This is a uh, different things to do with uh, research, right? It's the old beaker uh, research, back home, replay last actions, music. Okay, and then we talked about the resources. Then over here, uh, eventually, these will light up as we get going. You have characters, families, you have uh, generals, I believe, uh, you have buildings, and you have scout units. So these are your units here. If we click on that, you see we've got one scout. So then you can filter by different kinds of units. Down here, uh, let's get off the scout. So in this secondary uh, window right here, it's always going to be whatever you're clicked on. So, you know, well, we can't really see it now. But if we have multiple units, whatever we click on is going to be shown in this secondary bottom left window. So now you see Scout, and you can see how many hit points it has. So that's how damage is done in this game. You can see its defense and its base defense. And then if there are any modifiers, it will show you below that or, you know, as part of that, how much movement. And that is movement per order. So it can go three hexes through normal terrain uh, per order. This down here is, it is capped. You can't use every order in the game on one unit. You could only use four of them, okay? So, you know, it does cap it somewhat. We are Greece, and this is uh, the feather. The blue feather is for Greece. This is how many orders we have. We have seven, and right now we're gaining 10 per turn. So we get 10 new ones per turn that will all be modified by our leader and things that we build, okay? Then here, are, this is broken up by the different unit types, and you can see if you have any of these left to move, right? It's a very easy way to see that. You can also click on here, which will take you to the next unit that still has actions that can be taken, okay? This is in the year, all right? So that is in the year, or if you've moved everything, none of these are lit up. That'll also pop up here. You can see down here, bonus effects, We'll get into that. Uh, technology discovered. Now, when you start the game, you get three of these. You have, right now we have drama, stone cutting, and iron working. All right. We're not going to get into the tech tree just yet. It's a very good tech tree, and it has some innovations in it as well that we'll talk more about. But let's for now go ahead and just start the tutorial. So select your scout and move north across the river. That's north, last I checked. So let's scoop back, and you can see the blue lines here, and you see the movement paths, and you see that six. What does that mean? It's got a six and a scroll. And then if I go here, it's got a five and a scroll. Why is that? Well, we start with seven orders. So we have seven orders in turn one that we can use, all right? If we move here, this is telling us how many orders we'll have left if we move to that location, 
right? And I would say when you move, just go one order at a time. So we're going to use one order. I'm going to right click. Okay, yeah, it's saying <laughs> it, there's going to be a pop up here or there for the tutorial. When starting a new game in Old World, the map is yet unexplored. The many dark corners of the world and the secrets contained therein await your discovery. Send out your scout to peel back the fog and uncover the mysterious ruins. Hostile barbarians. Now, these are just kind of your uh, NPCs, non playable characters, right? That you kind of take over their territory to begin with before you run into the other civilizations. A multiplicity of tribes and other nations all right so tribes can also be out there uh, you know they're they're kind of like barbarians a little more civilized let's say and then nations when i keep saying other civilizations that's what i mean and various exotic creeds you might adopt as your state religion religion is very important in this game rumor has it that foul barbarians are encamped at the end of this valley encamped at the end of this valley send your scout north to confirm Remember, each concentric blue ring. Now, they're not really concentric. I just showed you that blue, uh, and that just shows you each one of those layers is a different order, okay? It indicates an order. Okay, I'll use my scout and go up the valley. Okay, and now you see this scout, and if I go right here, it's used one of its four actions because you can see it right up there. The It's blacked out, and there are three white dots left. And if we go up here, it'll show red because if we decide to do this, it will use up the second of the four. It'll also show you we'll only have five orders left if we move here. Now, you may say, go here. It's further along or it seems like it. Yeah, but I think that's going to slow us down because um, if you look down to the bottom right, Nope, it's actually flat and clear. You can see the terrain type of what you're hovering over. See, lush, flat, clear. Uh, let's go over this. This is lush flat scrub. It'll tell you any uh, bonuses, defensive bonuses. So you can see if we're in the scrub, it gives us a plus 25% defense against ranged units. We could also remove that scrub if we want to. If we go here, lush flat trees, that gives us a 50% defensive bonus against ranged units when we're in this uh, trees here. We could also remove the trees, all right? And the scout can do that, uh, but we'll talk about that later. All right, well, let's go as far as we can and let's go here. So now you can see this is starting to peel back a little bit. Uh, the scout has used two of its four possible movements. It's also used two of our orders, right? So let's just keep uh, rocking. Now, if we get up on a hill, we can see further. So why don't we do that? Uh, I think it'll open up one extra hex for us because we can see with our vision. So we're up on top of that hill and it unlocks three more. And let's just go out here. And when we get here, okay, now it's saying you spot some ore on the hill in the distance. Ore can be turned into iron by a mine. <clears throat> okay, it's just like every other 4X game you've played like this. You know, uh, ore gets turned into iron. You have to build a mine. You can improve your mine. You can put specialists in your mine, etc. Which can be in turn used to train warriors in a city. But first we need to find a city site to build a city on. If the rumor of barbarians being encamped at the end of the valley is true, some warriors would be handy to have. Scouts can spend an order to harvest yields from harvestable resources. So this is important. Why is this important? Because scouts are one of the main uh, unit types in this game, but at some point you kind of run out of things to do with them. Okay, but they can go harvest on their own. And so when we see a resource on the map, they can go there and harvest it. To do so, so click on the basket button in the action panel on the left while your scout is selected. So, okay, there is the ore, and we see it right here. You can tell, you know, it's a different kind of terrain. If I hover over it, we look down there by the mini-map, you see it's a lush hill clear. Resource, ore. All right, so if we harvest it, we'll get 10 ore. All right, uh, now we've used up all of our actions here. But we can force march this unit if we wanted to, but it would cost us 100 defense. So we actually cannot do that. Well, these are training points. I'm sorry. Uh, I call them defense, but they're training points. Um, we're getting 20 of these a turn. 
just as it stands now. Now we'll get bonuses and whatnot uh, later, depending on what we build. But if we were willing and if we had 100, we could go one more beyond our available action. So it costs you, uh, but as you can see, this is fatigued. Fatigued units cannot move without force march. Well, we can't force march. So we're going to have to go ahead and end the year. And you can see here, end year popped up because we don't have any other units to move. Now we end with three orders. They will carry over. Uh, end year. Okay. So we got some bonus orders there. I think that's because it is the tutorial. Uh, we had three. We add ten but I think we got eight extra ones uh, just because it's the tutorial. Okay, harvest the ore resource. So we're gonna go here and it's telling, it shows a 20. I actually think this is a slight bit confusing. I wish it would just say one, right? You're gonna use one order. Instead, you gotta look down here and see we have 21. If we go here, it would be 20. If we go, well, we can't go there, but let's say we were gonna go back here past the blue line it would be 19, but I like to go one at a time. So we'll go to the edge of the blue line, 20 on this ore. And if you see right here on your unit, harvest ore. And that's what it's telling us it wants us to do. So let's harvest the ore. Your scout has harvest, harvested the ore. It may take a few turns for the tutorial gods to train some warriors for you. Continue exploring the valley with your scout. Okay, so he's use one of his actions for this time harvesting ore and we'll just keep it moving forward let's go to a hill here as long as it's clear so we can see a little further that is uh flat so let's go to a hill and see a little further okay and then we'll go out here to the edge of the blue that uses an order now he's used three of his four so we can go one more now remember scouts cannot be seen in the forest so we may want to go over here with our last action just to make sure now what's this out here uh lush flat clear just as kind of i don't know that's just a little something on the map okay let's go over to the forest uh just so we can't be seen your scout has revealed a barbarian hovel on the riverbank the lush countryside surrounding the camp would be ideal for your new capital. If only those pesky barbarians weren't in the way. Fortunately, the tutorial gods have used the ore you harvested to train some warriors. Normally, you would train these in a city. The warrior is a melee unit and thus must be adjacent to the enemy to attack it. Click on the warrior with the left mouse button to select it. Then right click the highlighted tile next to the barbarian camp. Okay, finally with the warrior, right click on the camp to attack it. You may continue to explore with your scout. Just be careful not to get too close to the barbarians in case they attack. Well, that's why I put them in the woods. Uh, but let's see. Now we've got our warriors here. Okay, so here's our scout. Uh, if we click on that, that highlights our scout. He's got no available actions unless we were going to force march him, but we don't even have enough training to do that. You see, it would cost 100, right? Okay, so he's going to hang out here in the woods. They cannot see a scout who is in the woods. We're instead going to go over here to our warriors. Now, you can click on them here or click on them there. Sometimes when the map gets very filled up, you just want to click up here because you may end up clicking on something next to it. Uh, okay, there's our warriors. Now, what are we seeing over here? What can they do? Well, we could promote them if we want to spend 100 training. You know, and you could read through there, but if we promote that, well, let's just read this for a second. Cities produce military units with their training. Unused training goes into the global stockpile. Up here, that's the global stockpile. Um, come up, come up, tooltip. Well, hold on. Uh, does it not, there we go, no, it doesn't want to come back up. That's weird. Okay, well, we could also add a general to these guys. Um, and we'll talk about that, but we don't have a leader. We don't have any characters yet because we're in the tutorial. We could also fortify a town. So anytime you're on a unit, this will show all of the different uh, actions other than movement that it can do. Get back up. There we go. Okay, so I'm over training. It's not giving us a promotion. Uh, well, I guess we can do it through the tool tip. Um, Unused training goes into the global stockpile, which can be used to buy orders if you want to. So if you have a bunch of extra, you can buy orders. 
you can conduct a forced march. We've talked about that. We can assign generals and for unit promotions and upgrades. Now, if I hold down the center, click on the center mouse button, it locks this, right? And then we can go to promotions. Promotions provide various combat bonuses to your units. They are earned when leveling up from either acquiring experience points, so your units can get better, uh, or spending some training. Each time a unit chooses a promotion, three new ones are randomly chosen from the eligible pool for the unit's next level. So you level these things up. Units have a maximum of five levels. Good to know. Units can temporarily inherit promotions from traits on their generals. All right, well, we don't have any characters, as I said, so we can't do generals uh, yet. Let's just go down here and look at the unit itself. What is this? You can pass, you know, so it doesn't have to do anything this time. And you can, you know, keep it during the next unit when you keep clicking that and it keeps going back to the warriors. You can just say pass. You can have them sleep. You can also sentry duty. Okay, good to know. And let's just click here real fast. So that takes that down. Um, they are melee units. They're at negative 50% strength when they go across the river, and they take negative one hit point when they get counterattacked. Okay. Uh, they are infantry, and they get a plus 25% defense when they're in urban environments. Well, we don't have any urban environments yet, but that's uh, what they can do uh, when they are in them. They're a warrior. They're part of Greece. These are their hit points, and you can see HP, 20 of 20. They are level 1, and they have to get to 100 to go to level 2, all right? We could do that naturally through promotion if we had enough training points, but we don't, okay? Here, attack and defense, their base level is 8, and that's what they have. There are no modifiers right now, and they can go 2 hexes per order, that is what that is. They have three maximum actions that they can do per year or turn. Okay, uh, so the scout had four. They've got three. All right, so let's move these guys. And you can see we've currently got 16 orders. Now we've got 15 orders as we move here. And then the blue line moved out. And now we can move here with 14 orders. So let's do that. And now they've also used, if we're uh, here, you know, right here, you can see they've used two of their three orders. Now, again, you can pay extra and do one more called a force march, but we're not going to. I mean, there's no reason to do it here. Now that they're in the hex next to the barbarians and they still have uh, an action left to them and we have an, you know, it's only going to cost one order to do an action. We can right click here and attack. And if you look over here to the left, it will show us the breakdown. Now I haven't clicked this yet, I'm just hovering. Our attack value is eight. Well, we knew that, right? The defenders, the, their skirmishers, they have a defense base value of three. They're in an urban area, so they get a plus 25% urban as infantry. They are in a hovel, which is kind of what those sticks sticking up are, right? That's another plus 20%. When you put that all together, their overall defense, the adjusted, is 4.3. So we're approximately twice as good as these guys. They also seem to have uh, some hit points that are already missing over there. You can see they're down there in the orange and red. While we're fully uh, capable. So we're going to right click here and attack them. Okay, city sites. You've dealt them some damage, but these barbarians aren't done yet. In fact, they appear to be occupying a city site. The map is full of city sites, which are the only, good to remember, locations where settlers can found new cities. Claim a city site for your nation by simply moving a unit into it. You must defeat the barbarians before claiming the city site. Your warrior may only attack once per turn. That's it. You can only attack once per turn. So it may take a few turns. Okay. And they can also attack us. Your art warriors already attacked this turn and is now on cooldown, meaning that's why you can only attack once per turn. When you attack once, then you've got to cool down the rest of the turn. Continue exploring with your scout and proceed to attack each turn with your warrior until you defeat the barbarians. Okay, we will. 
Okay, uh, we've got nothing left to do here. I'll show you how this works when we get here to the next turn. You can also see down here, this is still technologies discovered. We're going to right click that. Um, we're going to right click this because these are the things we need to do. That's also shown up here during the tutorial. Uh, you can see we gained a little experience for our attack. See that there? So we've gained 10 experience points, 10 of 100, uh, before we can level up. Okay. And then you can see the, the skirmisher, the barbarians, did take some damage last time. They're down to just those four red bars. Excellent. Okay. Uh, we have to end the year because these guys are on cooldown. If I right click here, they can't do anything because they've already used their attack for this turn. So let's end the year. And now they attack us. And you can see up here, negative two hit points uh, is what, you know, uh, occurred out of that attack. Okay. If we look at our warriors, then you can see we have 18 of 20 hit points left. All right fine and if we go down here we now have 31 orders because we keep gaining you know you can keep them in the bank uh and, and build them up if you want to and it adds an extra layer of strategy in this game i think but if we go down here what do we see we see cycle idle military units right that's why the shield is lit up well this is the only military unit we've got we've also got idle scouts and if you click on that it'll take us here or you could just do next unit and because these are the only two units we have it'll just flip back and forth until we either pass the turn or do something with them well let's take the scout who is now crouching uh like a coward in the forest let's take him a little further uh because they're now locked in battle with us so we can go out here and you can see he's got to cross a river so he can only go two hexes this time with movement usually he can go three but this will be his second of four actions this time and now we're going to get out here he's going to go there and we still have 28 orders left and now we'll go again Oh, I don't know. Let's go here and, you know, our scouts out here moving around. Now we'll go next unit. And that brings us to our warriors and we will attack again. And we get 20 XP and we move into the city site. So we defeated the, the barbarians there. Believe me, it's not always that, <laughs> that simple. Oh, you can also find the same stuff over here on the units tab so if you want to see all of the units you have in the game so now we're on this city site and this is important to remember which is we cannot found a city with warriors we've got to do that with settlers which is a unit type we haven't seen yet but we can claim it and you can see here as long as we stand here this is claimed by Greece. So anyone that wants to come take it would have to declare war on us. I, you know, I know you don't know a whole lot about the game yet, but that's actually a really important concept is if you get your warriors over into the city site, which is any of these four urban hexes here or five, there are five urban hexes. As long as they're standing here, we've claimed this city site. It's the only place you can build cities, and somebody would have to declare war on us to get us out of here, right? They can't just come over here and fight us and say, okay, well, we're just going to fight one-on-one. -on -one. They would have to declare war on us. Uh, it's pretty important. Well, we see here we have no more units lit up. There's nothing else we can do. We bank our 26 orders, and we end the year. Victory! Ave Imperator, you have defeated the barbarians and taken control of the city site. If you want to read about city sites, you could do it right here or barbarians. In this tutorial, we covered the basics of moving and attacking with units, map exploration, and city sites. In the next tutorial, you will found your capital and get your economy up and running. Now, I am ready, but I'm going to stop this first one here. And when we come back next time, we'll go through the second tutorial and explain some more concepts about this amazing game. I mean, we've only scratched the surface, uh, just barely scratching. There is a lot to know about this game, but it is a heck of a lot of fun once you know it. So anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.